In the early days of my channel, I actually made a joke video of Whispers of Comet Lake where I laughed at how unimpressive it was going to be versus Zen 3. I made the jokes you might expect, you know, infinite pluses after 14 nanometer, no IPC increases, infinite security problems, which are still happening, and horrible integrated graphics. But then near the end of the video, I laughed about how Rocket Lake supposedly was coming afterwards also on 14 nanometer, and yeah, that that would be terrible if that's all they had in 2021. And of course, that's because I assumed it was just a speed refresh of 10 core Comet Lake, maybe finally with PCIe 4.0 support, but still useless. Of course, by now, though, enough details have emerged that we know that Rocket Lake is going to be quite a bit more than just a Comet Lake refresh. And I've covered these little details that have trickled out, like PCIe 4.0 support that will supposedly be enabled in the existing Z490 motherboards that Comet Lake is currently being serviced in if you drop a Rocket Lake CPU into it. And, you know, other things like they backported some code from Intel. But outside of that, no one's sure exactly where it will go up against Zen 3. Well, until now, I think I do. Recently, I have received a self-titled The Mother of All Leaks Out of Intel, and I will be going through several sets of information over the next couple of weeks, and the first one is Rocket Lake. Alder Lake, Sapphire Rapids, Ocean Cove, and, well, a couple other coves you've never heard of yet are out there, and I think some of them will be great. But let's do, you know, first comes first, first comes Rocket Lake, which supposedly uses Cypress Cove not Willow Cove. This information comes from one of my most trusted sources, and that's why I feel confidential releasing this information, despite not seeing it anywhere else so far. Now, there is no such thing as a true backport. That's what everyone needs to keep in mind. You know, this was designed, Willow Cove, initially for a very aggressive, although not working right away, 10 nanometer node. Now, if you're going to go back to a inferior node, at least on paper, there's going to have to be some sacrifices. In other words, I don't think we will see the full 25% IPC leak, uh, IPC increase over Skylake that we should see out of Willow Cove, as I've previously reported in my Whispers of Golden Cove video from last October. Now, don't rule out them still calling it Willow Cove, though, right? Here's how I see it. Tiger Lake is something Intel is confident in right now, and it should be much, much better than Ice Lake, much more efficient. However, porting it to 14 nanometer, if it ends up using on 14 nanometer, you know, over double the energy with lower IPC, do you really want to market Rocket Lake as Willow Cove? Because then you'll have people saying Willow Cove isn't that impressive. So that's how I see it. Like, Intel's going to call this Cypress Cove, most likely, if it doesn't have... If, if its IPC advantage is closer to Ice Lake in reality, and if it uses an insane amount of energy, which most leaks out there point to it using maybe a little less energy than Comet Lake, so I guess less than 200 watts, but still far more than Coffee Lake. But anyways, let us move on. It has up to eight Cypress Cove cores. Now, hypothetically, they could if they wanted to make a 10-core model, according to one of my sources, but the heat and power is already an issue at eight cores. Like I said, I expect this to use slightly less energy than 10-core Comet Lake. So imagine adding two more cores, then also the required cache to support those Cypress Cove cores. It's just not really in the cards. We should expect up to eight cores, but again, it will outperform Comet Lake. It will have higher IPC, if not as good as Willow Cove, potentially. And it is tweaked for higher clocks than Tiger Lake, 4.7 gigahertz or higher. I'm not entirely sure if it will have, you know, what is what do they call it velocity boost up to 5.3 gigahertz but it should be pretty close to comet lake's clock speeds unlike tiger lake now additionally it will have gen 12 intel graphics that is the same graphics that are in tiger lake but unlike tiger lake it's going to have less than 96 eus and that's to make room for the massive cores in cache that are so much bigger on 14 nanometer versus the aggressively dense 10 nanometer node. Um, and 
I don't know the exact number, but there is reference to 32 multiple times, although no one's 100% sure. And in fact, this may come on a separate 10 nanometer chiplet, but again, not 100% confirmed. The point is, it will be a cut down version of the graphics in Tiger Lake that will go into laptops. And I actually did reach out to hardware on Boxed because I could not for the life of me find good integrated clock speed information for Ice Lake. He found that on his 15 watt Ice Lake laptop, it runs at about 900 megahertz. So the 28 watt versions of Ice Lake are boosting to the full 1100 megahertz boost clock with 64 execution units. So if we assume that Tiger Lake has, let's say, half the execution units, but is on desktop, I think we can assume that it will boost higher, right? Why would it not than the laptop version? And it should come with a 20 to 30% IPC increase over Ice Lake's integrated graphics. And so, yeah, at the end of the day, I think it could perform like the laptop Ice Lake integrated graphics, so around an MX150, despite using more energy. But you know, again, it's on desktop, so I don't think anyone will matter. And this should offer a huge boost in GPU accelerated tasks over the ancient Skylake GPU that is still being used in Comet Lake. Now, the final thing you're probably wondering, right? I've said it all the graphics, the IPC, the clock speeds, and how many cores you'll expect. Well, is it going to come out this year? I received information, as I've reported, in October that they were trying to pull up this as much as possible because they know they need it to at least not look terrible next to Zen 3. But all outside information and my sources say that it's almost certainly a quarter one 2021 product on Unfortunately. And remember, the original roadmap did not show Rocket Lake in 2020. I just received information that they were trying to pull it up as much as possible. And of course, I'm not going to speculate on price, but if Zen 3 is a home run, I would expect this to be cheaper than the equivalent SKUs in Comet Lake. And at this point, I'm guessing a lot of you PC gamers are going, Tom, are you tired? Why aren't you more excited about what you just talked about? It sounds like modern IO, PCIe 4.0, basically a 9900K with a 20% IPC increase and graphics that don't completely suck for GPU acceleration. Why aren't you more excited? Well... I'll get to that in a second. Look, there's there's really no doubt that this will be substantially better than Comet Lake, but it's really all about timing. And I just think that everything coming out right now, Comet Lake, Rocket Lake, are stopgaps to the truly good, finally working 10 nanometer products coming soon. Like Willow Cove, which is on 10 nanometer utilized in Tiger Lake. Many people have covered this before, but it's worth talking about it again now that I've received an extra bit of confirmation. It is what Cypress is derived from. Now, Tiger Lake is coming this summer with four cores and around MX350 performance, which is 10 to 20% better than Top Renoir. It may depend on the game a little bit, but it will have better graphics performance and it will boost pretty similarly to 14 nanometer mobile chips, despite being on 10 nanometer and having 20 to 30% higher IPC than Skylake. Now they are trying to get an eight core Tiger Lake out by quarter one of 2021, but well, again, this is one of those things where you're just accelerating the development as much as possible. It could slip to quarter two next year, but I suspect they might even get it out by the end of this year, to be honest. And Intel is, as you can see by this information or understand why, they're very confident behind the scenes in Tiger Lake still. They're a bit disappointed that Renoir will be mostly competitive with it, but don't underestimate it. You know, it has half the cores, but it will have about 20% higher IPC than Renoir, and that will make it win in many tasks with better graphics performance at about the same power usage. And 10 nanometer is getting to work better now. People should really expect Tiger Lake to be in way more designs than before. One number I was given is 50% more prevalent designs around Tiger Lake at its launch than Ice Lake is now. And Ice Lake is much more ubiquitous now than it was around its launch where you could almost not find it anywhere. So in other words, it's going to be very real and you're going to see it in a lot of products, at least the better ones. No one should be using Intel's 14 nanometer anymore. And Intel does expect to have their 14 nanometer demand problem solved by the end of this year. This is also something I've covered before, but what's interesting is 
they are likely to start transitioning some of their 14 nanometer capacity into 10 nanometer once they catch up with 14 nanometer demand. And this will be them ramping up more high volume Tiger Lakes, hopefully with eight cores by the end of this year, and eventually Alder Lake next year. And let me just say this, Alder Lake next year does look incredibly impressive if they can get it out before the end of summer, but I will just have to cover that in another video. A video that will cover Sapphire Rapids, Golden Cove, Alder Lake, and many other types of Intel products coming over the next couple of years. A decent amount of them on 10 nanometer with higher core counts than we're seeing now and architectures that will do some pretty interesting stuff and implement some pretty interesting memory types on die. But that's not what's happening this year. And this really gets me to the main point of this video. Like I said, to some gamers hearing better I.O. on a 9900K that has 20% higher IPC, effectively what Rocket Lake is, that sounds incredible, but look, there's really no way around it. It's coming out after Zen 3, as far as I can tell, or at the very least, it's not going to come out first. And Zen 3 should have the same IPC, maybe even a little higher, using half the energy with higher core counts on a better platform, or at least an equivalent platform. And so, yeah, I guess Rocket Lake is going to be way better than what I joked about last year, but it is no Zen 3 killer. And I'm not even sure it's going to be a Matisse 2 killer, and Matisse 2 comes out in a month from now. So the big takeaway, really, if you're watching this video, is I just wouldn't get some type of i3 or i5 on a Z490 motherboard with expectations that you'll be excited to upgrade to a Rocket Lake CPU at the end of this year and have the ultimate gaming processor. You'd be better off just getting a 3300X right now and getting Zen 3 before Rocket Lake comes out because it's going to be better, it's going to be more efficient, and it's going to have less problems. And this is just the sad truth about Intel, Rocket Lake, and Cypress Cove. It will not be their 14 nanometer savior next year. No, it's the product they should have had to tread water at the beginning of this year. 14 nanometer products need to get out of here. It's time for the future. And for now, the future is AMD. I truly believe the end of 2020 and early 2021 is going to be the low point of Intel's competitiveness in the CPU market. And that things will start to get maybe just a little bit better at the end of 2021. And then 2022, as I will cover in a part three or four of my Intel information, <laughs> it could be pretty insane between AMD and Intel, but that's just not this year. This year belongs to AMD. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video about Rocket Lake and Tiger Lake. The one about Sapphire Rapids and Alder Lake comes next, and then the GPU, and then, well, maybe some experimental stuff. I'm not entirely sure what I'll do with that one just yet, but, you know, make sure you subscribe to my channel to see all this information coming out, including information about Ampere and RDNA 2 as well. I'm actually surprised she lasted that long on the couch. And if you have the money, but only if you do, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It really does help, and you get exclusive access to ad-free podcasts and other content every week. All right, thank you for watching.